Today we will be creating a switch that is going to tell our platform whether or not it should be moving or restarting. To do this, we're gonna need three different things. First, we need a way for our character to activate our switch. Then we're gonna need a way for our switch to react to the input. And then finally, we're going to need to connect a platform to our switch so that that switch can tell the platform what to do. In order for our character to talk to the world, we're going to have to use a concept called a line trace. Basically, the way you can think about a line trace is whenever we press a button, we are going to send a line forward that is going to detect whether or not we hit something. And if it hits our switch, well, then our switch is going to be interacted with and we are going to use our switch. So let's start by creating that new action now. We're going to go into our first person folder and then we're going to go into the input folder. We have to do this in two different parts. The first thing we're gonna do is go into actions and create a separate action. To create the action, we're going to right click, then go to input, and this is going to be an input action. And to follow the same cadence here, I'm going to call this IA underscore interact. Once that's done, we're gonna open it up and all we're going to do is save this so that it stays in our project in case we crash. Going back to the general input folder, we're now going to open up the IMC default. This is the input mapping manager, and this dictates what buttons cause which actions to take place. Already there is an action set up for jumping, moving, and looking. We're gonna hit this little plus sign here, and we're going to add another one for our interact. And hitting this little drop down here, I'm going to set interact to be the F key. And then I'm good to save those changes. With that pre-work done, we're now good to go and start coding. Into our C++ classes, we can open up, and we're going to create a new C++ class. This is going to be an actor because we're going to be placing it in the world, and I'm going to call this my switch. And then I'm going to create this class. Once that's loaded, we're good to start making our changes. For the sake of reducing how many times I flip back and forth, do note that I have my switch files open, my character files open, and my moving platform files open. We're gonna start with phase one, which is creating that line trace that I was talking about before. Let's start by going into our character's header file. The first thing to do is to set up the interact action that we had just finished setting up in the blueprint. Scrolling down to where all the other input actions are, I'm simply going to copy the most recent one that was created and I'm going to paste it and make some light changes. It's still gonna follow the same defaults, we're just going to change the name to be the interact action. And then if we go into the C++ file, we'll scroll down until we find the setup player input component. And as I've touched on in previous videos, we're going to bind this action to a specific function, but we haven't created that function yet, so let's do that quickly. Back into the header file, and I'll go scroll all the way to the bottom of this to create a new private section, where I will create a new void function that I will call interact. Then if I go and hit Alt and Enter together, I can create the definition of that inside of my C++ file, and now we're going to create this binding up inside of setup player input component. Since I like cheating, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste this for my interact action. I'm just going to change the look action to be our interact action that we've gotten previously. Then at the end of the line, I'm going to change this away from the look method and put that into the interact method that we've just created. So now we have successfully bound the interact action to the interact method. And now we're going to go down here and create our interact method. So let's remember what our goal is here. Our goal is on interact to fire out a little line that's going to check to see if we hit something. And if we do hit something that we're interested in, we are going to call to that thing and say that we are activating it. To make things visual, we are going to use the draw debug line class. In order to use that file set, we're going to need to go all the way to the top here and include another file here. And the file we're going to include is the draw debug helpers.h. Back to our interact method, we're now good to start building out this function. In general, to make sure that we can see what we're doing, we're going to be using that draw debug line that I talked about before. Draw debug line takes in a variety of different things, and we're going to go through them one at a time and we're going to populate them as we go. The first thing that our debug line needs is a reference to the world that it'll be drawing in. To get the world that we're working on, we're going to call get world. The next two variables we're going to need is a reference to where the line is going to start and where the line is going to end. Logically, we're going to start at where our player is, but the end is going to be a designated distance away from where we start. To make this a little bit easier to reference, let's make these as two different f vector variables. The first f vector I will call start, and that is going to be equal to our capsule component, so let's get a reference to our capsule component and let's get that component's location. For our next f vector, this is going to be our end vector, and it's going to be equal to our starting value plus some distance times the way that we're looking. The way that we can make sure that we're always multiplying in the right direction is to get something called a forward vector. And luckily, there's an easy way to do this. We're gonna call the method get actor forward vector, and that guarantees that we're going to be looking the right way when we're doing this. 
So now the only thing to do here is to define what sum distance is. Remembering that Unreal works off of the metric system of measurement. Now, usually you could make this into a U property and then scale things as you'd want. But I'm just going to raw set this to 400, which isn't the best coding practice, but it's quick and dirty and it's gonna get the job done. So going back towards our debug line, we're now good to give our start and end vectors to this calculation. Now, the only other thing that we're gonna need to give our debug line is a color. This could be really any color you want, as long as you call it the F color. And I'm just going to call it, uh, let's make it a nice emerald. So now, whenever we hit our interact key, we are going to draw a debug line that shoots in the direction we're facing for four meters. That's all well and good, but we need an actual way to get now a reference to whatever object we hit when we do an actual trace or sweep of this line. To do this, we're gonna go back into Unreal and we're going to go into Edit and then Project Settings. If we go down here to the Collision Presets, we can see here there's a whole section related to trace channels. Trace channels work a lot like collision channels. You can dictate who belongs to what group, and then when you call for certain traces, you're gonna call for a trace down a certain channel. This gives you a very reliable way to only hit objects that you care about on certain sweeps. So let's create a new trace channel together, and let's call this trace channel interactables. And the default response for this is going to be to ignore because we want to manually set every single object that we want to be interactable. So once we accept, we can see this joins properly, but this won't actually show up inside of any of our blueprints until we've reloaded our project. So let's do that now. So now with our project reloaded, if I click on this platform that we have in the world here, and I go into their collision, and I expand this so that we can see everything, you will now be able to see that we have a new trace response called interactables that is set to ignore by default. Now we haven't actually created our switch objects yet, so we're not gonna set anything on the platform because our platform isn't interactable. But at least we now have a reference to this trace channel that we need to do a sweep on. So let's go down this rabbit hole. Whenever you're doing a sweep, you're going to be creating a variable for the hit result that is going to be filled in afterwards by a method that you're using. This can be very confusing, and I'll admit, I haven't even wrapped my head around the concept fully yet, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like in practice. Let's create a variable of type f hit result, and let's just call it hit result for simplicity. We are now gonna make a Boolean variable that's gonna be called has hit, that's going to dictate if we hit anything on our trace. The way that we start a trace is we are going to make this Boolean equal to our world, and we're gonna call a function off of our world called sweep single by channel. So this is going to say that we are going to sweep in that line based off of a channel that we're going to provide. The channel we care about is that interactable channel that we just created. Inside of this function, we need to give many things. The first is the variable we would like to store the hit result in. We can see here inside of the IntelliSense for this method that we have an F hit result called out hit. Whenever you see out, in a variable name inside of these Unreal functions, it usually means that you have to declare the variable that you're gonna be putting this data outside of the actual function call. And then it's going to put it there while this function is running. So when I put hit result here, this means that our hit result variable that we created is going to get populated by running this function. Now, after we give them the hit result that we want to populate, we're now going to give them those vectors that we created earlier. We're gonna give them our start vector, and then we're going to give them our end vector. Next, we need to give them something called an F quat. I cannot pronounce how this full word actually sounds. But regardless, it's a math concept, and we're basically going to give it the default value. And the default value of an F quat is the identity. Now, the last things we need to give is we need to give the channel that we're going to be tracing on and the shape that the collision is going to be. Now, I know what you're thinking. The channel we're tracing on is called identifiables. But that actually doesn't exist in terms of code. And I'm gonna teach you right now how we can translate from the English that we created inside of our settings to something the code understands. If you go into your file explorer and open up your project, there's a whole bunch of things available to you. In this case, we need to find a specific file. So inside of our game files, we're going to go into config, and then we're going to look for the default engine. And we can see that is right here. Let's open this with a notepad. This is going to give a reference to all of the different variables that exist inside of the engine. Trace channels are a part of the engine. So if I hit Control F to search through this and I look for interactables, we can see that once I spell it properly, interactables shows up here on this line. Then we can see here that the channel equals ECC underscore game trace channel two. 
if we copy that value, that is what we're going to need to pass into our method here. So back to code, let's plop in the channel that we want to use, that interactables channel. And then lastly, what we need to provide is the shape. And the way we do this is we can call something called an F collision shape. And I'm going to call the method make sphere that is going to have a radius provided. And I'm just going to say 100 for our radius. So go through and make sure you've properly put a comma in between each of your variables. And then we're now good to have this trace run. And at the end of that trace, we're going to have two things. We're going to have a Boolean that lets us know if something has been hit by our trace. And we're going to have the hit result of that trace. So coming off of this, we are going to make an if statement that says if we have hit something or if has hit equals true, then we're going to be able to trigger a function we're going to create off of our switch in just a little bit. So the first thing we need to do is we need to guarantee that we have hit a switch. And the way we're gonna do that is through casting. But before we can cast to a switch, we first need to include the switch inside of this file. So let's go over to our switch.cpp so that we can copy the include for the switch.h file and then go all the way to the top of our code and drag in yet another header file. Now with that out of the way, we're good to start this casting here. So I want to create a variable of type a switch and that I want to be called our hit actor. And what we're going to do is we're going to cast into a switch the hit result that we've got dot get actor. This means we're going to get a reference from the hit result that is generated, and we're going to get the actor off of that hit result, and we're going to make sure that it's a switch. The way we're going to know it's a switch is through another if statement, and we're going to say if our hit actor is not equal to something called a null pointer. If the casting fails, well then it would be equal to the null pointer, and that's no good. But if this is not equal to a null pointer, that means we must have hit a switch, which means that we can then call a function off of that that we have yet to create. But to just fill in a little placeholder here, we're going to call something off of hit actor and let's call this method on activate. Obviously we're going to get red squigglies here, but that's because we haven't created it yet. And before we go ahead and create our switch, we're going to go into our moving platform now just to make sure that they are set up and ready to rumble. First, we're going to go into the moving platforms header file and I'm going to create another U property. This U property is going to simply state if we should start by moving or not moving. Since we just want to set the default, we are going to make sure that we are only able to set the default. And the category that we're going to put this in is going to be that pathing category we set up in another lecture. And again, this is going to be a Boolean variable and I'm going to call this is moving. So now inside of the moving platform C++ file, we're going to just quickly amend what we did in begin play. So what we have set up by default here is that if we are supposed to be moving, we will move. Because when we call this finalize control points, we are saying that they can start moving. So if we are not moving or if is moving is false, then we're going to need to make sure we are not moving. And the way we make sure we're not moving is we're gonna call something off of our movement component called stop movement immediately. Very self-explanatory function, very lovely function. Now the next thing we're gonna do is create another method that's going to specifically handle when this input gets toggled. So into the header file quickly, we can create a public function that's going to be a void because it returns nothing. And this is going to be toggle movement. Creating a definition inside the C++ file, we're now good to toggle our movement. What's that gonna look like? Well, it's gonna be a series of if statements. If we are moving or if moving is true, well, that means we're already in movement. And that means that we should set is moving to be false because we don't wanna be moving after this. And then we should call that method we called earlier or movement component, stop movement immediately. Next, we need to make sure that if we are not moving, we start moving. And I'm gonna do that with an else if. So else if we are not moving, then we're going to set is moving to be true. And then we're going to call a method off of our movement component that is called restart movement. And I'm gonna say that we should start moving in the positive direction by giving a positive number. So now with all of that done, we are good to go and create our actual switch now. Because reusing code is cool, I'm gonna go into my moving platforms header file and I'm going to copy the code for the box collider and the platform mesh. Inside of my switches header file, I'm going to go and create that private section of variables. And I'm going to use those exact same lines of code. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to not call this the platform mesh, I'm going to call this my switch mesh because naming conventions. Now I'm going to shamelessly steal from my moving platform C++ file. Then I'm going to go into my C++ file and I'm going to steal the declaration inside of the constructor for both of those and I'll plop those in there. The only thing that needs to change is I change this to be our switch mesh. 
and I will call this our switches mesh. And then of course, to make sure there's no errors, we need to include our box component inside of this file. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna create a U property inside of our header file that's going to dictate the object that this switch is responsible for activating. This is going to be public in case we want to access it and change it, but we're gonna create this U property now. This U property we're going to set to be edit anywhere, and we're gonna make sure that blueprints are going to be able to read and write to this value. For a category, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new category that I'm gonna call platform. And then I'm going to give this a meta tag the meta tag that I'm caring about here is the expose on spawn. And I'm gonna make sure that this is equal to true. Remember, expose on spawn does need a capital O, but more importantly, expose on spawn is going to be what's responsible for making sure that each instance of our switch is going to have a different platform attached to it. Without this meta tag, this would not be an instance definable variable. So now we're going to forward declare the class that we're going to use, which is of course going to be our a moving platform class and I'm gonna call this the connected platform. Now in order to follow through on what we created inside of our character earlier, I'm going to make a public void function called onActivate that is going to handle when we activate this switch. Creating this inside of my C++ file, we're now good to go and see what happens when this switch activates. And when our switch activates, we wanna go to our connected platform and we wanna call a method off of our connected platform called toggle movement that we created before. But you'll notice we're getting an error here because I didn't include the header file. So plopping our header file into the top and then going back down here to let IntelliSense rule the day, we're gonna take our connected platform and we're gonna call that method toggle movement that we had built previously. And now finally, after such a journey, we are done all the coding. So I'm going to save everything that we've worked on and I'm going to compile this now. With a successful compile, we are good to go ahead and right click on our switch to create a blueprint class based off of it. I will call this my switch and I will plop it in my content folder for simplicity. So at this point, we can decide what our switch is going to look like. And since I am not very creative, my switch is going to look like a circle and it's going to have a box collider inside of it. Now inside of this box collider, the only thing we have to make sure that we are checking off is we have to go into our collision settings. And we're going to make sure that our collision presets are set to custom so that we can go and toggle the collision response for our interactables trace channel to make sure that we block. This means that if we go and are targeting through this mesh, it's going to not only absorb and action the interact event, but it's going to stop us from penetrating through this object to interact with more than one object at the same time. So I'll compile and save that there. And now I'm going to drag my switch out into the world. And I'll just position my switch neatly right here. And if I go into my switch's variables on the right hand side, we will see near the top that we have our connected platform. When I hit the drop down for my connected platform, we will see that since there's only one platform in my world, it's a rather easy decision for us to make. So I will connect that platform to my switch and now I will hit play. Now when I look at my switch and I hit our interact button, you'll notice that nothing is happening. We're not even drawing that debug line that I had talked about before. What gives? Well, that's because we actually didn't go into our blueprint ever since we had set up our code for our new interact action. So back into our first person blueprint now, and if we look for our input, we'll see that the interact action is blank and we should fill that in to be our interact action or our IA underscore interact. Compiling and saving that now, we are good to play. And now you'll see that when we press, we're gonna have that line shoot out. And now when I point my line at my switch, you will see that we go and properly start our path for our platform. Now I of course have the ability to make a constant trace channel, which you can see causes some weird things to happen when I'm just holding onto my line. The way that you can fix this is by changing this interact type away from being on triggered and only having it take place on started. But I'm not gonna do that and I'll leave that up to you to do if you would like to. But now we have created a system where we have a switch dictating whether or not our platform should be moving. This type of functionality can be really good and used on doors, keys, or anything of the sort when you're making your games. Thanks for watching. If you got value out of this tutorial, then subscribe to this channel to continue learning with me for Unreal going forward. Happy coding, have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.